Let's go. You could have been anywhere in the YouTube world, but you're here with me, and I appreciate that. Welcome to Zay Reviews. And another Monday has come and gone, so you already know what time it is. We're tapping into this week's edition of Monday Night Raw, coming at us from Buffalo, New York. So the night starts off with Seth Rollins coming out. We got the Seth Rollins fit check. You know he's coming out looking like a peacock. Seth wasting no time and he invites Cody Rhodes out to the ring. Now Buffalo loves Cody and Seth could barely get words in at the beginning of this promo. The crowd just kept chanting for Cody Rhodes. Seth once again make it a point that Cody had all the time in the world to prepare for their match at WrestleMania when Seth Rollins had no idea that Cody was going to be his opponent. So Seth said, I want you to know how that feels. So tonight in the main event, I have a match for you, but you won't know who you'll be facing. Are you down for the challenge? And of course, Cody accepts the challenge. And later on in the night for the main event, we will get Cody Rhodes versus a mystery opponent of Seth's choosing. Next, we get a women's tag team championship title defense as Sasha Banks and Naomi defend the belts against the team of Rhea and Liv Morgan. Now with the momentum of Rhea and Liv both having singles victories over both Sasha and Naomi, you would have thought that they would have won this match and a couple of times they did come close but the match would come down to the end as Sasha Banks and Naomi would hit their double team move, this time switching it up. When Banks would hit the double knees to the face or the cold breaker, whatever you want to call it, this time, Naomi would rebound off of that with the full Nelson drop or the bubble bomb, whatever you want to call it. But the women's tag team champions, they successfully defend their belts. After the match, naturally, Rhea Ripley was quite pissed off. She takes another tag team L. She becomes very frustrated and her and Liv Morgan, they start having a huge argument in the ring. Liv wanting no parts of it, decides to walk off on Rhea, but before she could walk off, Rhea attacks her from behind and we get that Rhea Ripley heel turn that's been teased for the past couple weeks. Rhea hits the riptide on Liv, lays her out in the ring, and Rhea walks off. So there's been rumors that they're going to pair her with Edge and Damian Priest. So let's see what's going to happen over the next few weeks. But we got the turn. Rhea Ripley is officially a heel. Next, we're joined in the ring by authority figure Sonya Deville. She goes on to address the fact that she attacked Bianca Belair last week and why she decided to do so. Sonya said that she always wanted to find her way back to being a competitor in WWE, but she had no other choice but to take the authority role. But once she saw Bianca Belair win the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania, she felt that it was the perfect opportunity for her to become a competitor again because she feels that Bianca is the very best and she wants to compete against the very best. But not for long, Bianca Belair does come out to confront Sonya. And she says, if you really want to face the very best, if you really want to have this match, what's up? Let's face each other one-on-one -on -one tonight. Well, I'll put the Raw Women's Championship on the line tonight. Let's fight right now. Sonya agrees. However, she says that she does not want to fight in a grimy city like Buffalo. So let's fight next week. Let's fight next week in your hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee. So next week in Knoxville, we will get a Raw Women's Championship match between Bianca Belair and Sonya Deville. Now Bianca just won the belt, so I feel like that they're not gonna have her drop the belt this soon. But with WWE's booking in the past when it comes to hometown talent, <laughs> it could go either way. So let's see what happens next week. Next, we get a real quick squash match. You got Veer coming out, taking on a hometown talent. I forgot the guy's name. It doesn't even matter what his name is. I know a little rock reference for you. But Veer does squash the dude in less than three minutes, hooking on the half camel clutch making the dude tap out immediately and he got a little post action beat down still applying the half camel clutch took a bunch of officials to get him off you already know giving him that dominant beast look and it looks like they're gonna book him like how they booked big guys in the past like Braun Strowman and etc etc just feed them jobbers and make them look strong for the first couple months next we get a quick backstage segment as we are joined once again with Sonya Deville and this time she is talking to fellow authority figure Adam Pierce. Sonya is going off of the fact that Bianca tried to put her hands on her at the end of their segment. Bianca tried to hit the KOD on Sonya and Sonya got out of there right on time. And Adam Pierce is like, look, the higher ups are looking at you and you are going to be investigated for your actions. You have been wilding lately. You have been putting your hands on talent. You have been causing wreck for talent. 
So the higher ups, they're gonna investigate what's going on with you. In the meantime, Sonya's like, look, they should be investigating Bianca. She should not put her hands on me. She at least should be fine for what she did. So Adam Pierce agrees to find her. And when Bianca walks into the frame, he would only find her a dollar. And Bianca was like, hey, I got my money's worth. And it was a very funny segment. Sonya looking real hurt, looking real salty. But Bianca paid the cost, got that out of the way. And once again, we will get that Raw Women's Championship match next week. Next, we cut to the ring and we have the KO Show, of course, hosted by Kevin Owens. And this time around, Kevin Owens is going to administer a lie detector test with Ezekiel or who he feel is Elias. Kevin Owens is joined in the ring by Chad Gable. He said that he needed the smartest in the WWE universe by his side to help him administer this lie detector test. So they invite Ezekiel out to the ring and if you've seen lie detector segments in the past when it comes to wrestling, you already know what it is. Every single question that Ezekiel was asked worked in his benefit. They said, are you Elias? He said, nah. They said, are you Elias's younger brother? He said, yeah. Of course, making Kevin Owens look crazy again. Chad Gable look crazy. They're just both looking like idiots in the ring. That leads to a one-on-one -on -one match between Ezekiel and Chad Gable. Pretty stale match, to be honest. I felt like the crowd was dead for this one. And the match wasn't long. It would come down to his end when Ezekiel would hit the single leg crab on Chad Gable. And when it seemed like he was going to tap Gable out, Otis would run into the ring, attack Ezekiel, and the match would end in disqualification. So Ezekiel, with his first match with this gimmick, he would win, but it wouldn't be like a pin or a submission he would win by disqualification next we get a tag team match as the raw tag team champions rk bro take on the street profits once again and these guys have been going at it several times in the past year so every time they get together you know we're gonna have a good match solid match they gave these guys a lot of time and shockingly the Raw Tag Team Champions took a very rare L. At some point during the match, Montez Ford would make a motion to the entrance ramp and the Usos music would hit. Angelo Dawkins would blindside Randy Orton as they would set up the legal man Matt Riddle for the Doomsday Blockbuster combo. And we get a clean one, two, three. The Street Profits have a win over the Raw Tag Team Champions. They take to the mic and they say that they are the team to look out for and they want the smoke. Hey, look, they have a victory over the Raw Tag Team Champions once again. So they could twist up the storyline. They're still a couple of weeks away from Backlash. And so far, it's looking like we're going to have that Raw Tag Team Champions versus SmackDown Tag Team Champions match with RK Bro and the Usos. But they can flip the script and the Street Profits can mess around and become the Raw Tag Team Champions just in time for them to infiltrate this match and it could mess around and be the street profits and the usos for both belts and that'll still be an awesome match next we get a backstage segment as we are joined with edge and his homie damian priest by his side next we're joined by next we have a backstage segment as edge is joined by his protege damian priest Priest goes on to say that, hey, I know y'all are very confused over my actions last week in my match with AJ Styles. I know y'all wondering why he did what he did. And he says our sole purpose right now is to make AJ Styles life a living hell. He's in our way, and as long as he's in our way, we're going to torture him. Edge says that this path that he is on in his life is a culmination of everything he's been through for the past 20 years. And we have seen this version of him before. We've seen him in the Ministry of Darkness. We've seen him in the Brood. And now his mental is on a whole nother plane. He once again says that him and Damien are going to cast judgment on AJ Styles. And of course, this leads to a cutoff to another backstage interview. And now we are being interviewed with AJ Styles. And as AJ was given his rebuttal, he didn't even have too much time to talk. Edge and Damian Priest come out of nowhere as the strobe lights hit and we get the purple lighting, their little signature purple lighting. They would lodge AJ's arm into a drawer. They would take the door of said drawer and would smash it into AJ's arm over and over and over again. And then they hit us with the evil laugh and then they walk off. So it looks like they wrote off AJ Styles for the next couple of weeks. Once again, Edge has just been <laughs> beating up Styles. First it was that concerto, now it's his arms. 
poor styles. Next, we get a United States Championship match as Finn Balor defends the United States Championship against Austin Theory. Now, Theory has had Finn Balor's number, his, his blood type, his social for like the past month and a half. Every single time that these two have gotten in the ring together, Theory has got the dub. And this time was no different. They had a very solid match, a very long match, but the turning point in this match is when Theory would hit a neck breaker on the outside of the ring to Finn, kind of messing Finn's game up throughout the rest of the match. Finn Balor would attempt the coup de gras, he would miss, and as he was selling the neck, Austin Theory would take advantage of that, hit the eight town down for the one, two, three. And we have a brand new United States champion. To a shock to no one, everyone felt like that Austin was going to get this win and much to our theory he won <laughs> theory would be joined in the ring by a few of the heels from the back they would come out and hold them up hold up the new champ he was soaking the crowd admiration I mean some were booing him but he was just soaking it all in and not too long we would hear that legendary theme song no chance that's what you got your boy Vince McMahon comes out and he celebrates with his protege. He celebrates with his golden egg. Theory and Vince, they take a couple of selfies together and Theory walks off with the United States Championship. And it makes me wonder what's next for Finn Balor. They didn't really have Finn do much with the United States Championship. And there's been rumors on Vince's opinion on Finn and how he's completely given up on the guy, which sucks because Finn Balor is a universal talent. The man is amazing and they just gotta figure out what to do with him. If not, who knows, y'all, we might see the return of Prince Devitt in another wrestling company. Next, we get probably one of the worst segments I've seen in a very long time. We get the double wedding ceremony with R-Truth running the whole thing, running this whole sh show. You got Akira Tozawa marrying Tamina, and you got Dana Brooke marrying Reggie. The crowd completely hijacked this segment what chance all across the board it was one of those segments that you really couldn't wait until it ended but one little takeaway that i got from this is as tamina was making her entrance to the ring we had the women's tag team champions sasha banks and naomi helping her out to the ring with her dress these three were all in a stable before team bad just a few years ago so it was nice to see this little team bad reunion but besides that the segment sucked and of course we got the hot potato of the 24 7 championship at the end after rings were exchanged and words were exchanged reggie and dana would kiss but this would lead to reggie hitting a little roll up pin on dana for the one two three and the 24 7 championship but then tamina would hit a super kick she'd pin reggie and she'd become the 24 7 champion but then akira tozawa little goofy ass would climb up under tamina's dress and roll her up for a pin and he would become the 24 7 champion but then dana brooke with a cross body off the top rope wedding dress and all one two three and she regains the 24 7 championship and then dana runs off with our truth so i don't know what they're gonna do in the future with these people and this championship it has gone to shit a long time ago so i don't know <sighs> they might just give up on it but we'll see in the next few weeks and finally we have reached our main event of the night cody rhodes going up against a mystery opponent handpicked by seth rollins adrenaline and my, you, you already know you already know your boy cody rhodes is in the middle of the ring and he is waiting for Seth. Seth comes out and he says that your opponent is a former world champion, and that's no lie. And out comes Seth's good friend, Kevin Owens, and we're getting the one-on-one -on -one match between Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes. Now the two have a solid fight, wonderful match, great spots back and forth, but it will come down to the very unfortunate ending of a count out. As Kevin Owens was ringside and he was attempting to get back in the ring, Seth Rollins would say, hurry up, get back in there, get your fat ass back in there. And that whole fat ass thing just triggered Kevin Owens. He said, what you say? What you call me? Bro, this not even my fight, bro. He just walked off on Seth. <laughs> and Kevin Owens got counted out and Cody would get the dub. As Cody would take to the turnbuckle and celebrate with the crowd, Seth Rollins would blindside him, attack him from behind, pushing him off the top rope to crash to the outside of the ring. Cody would grab his ankle and sell the ankle. So it looks like that we are gonna have a story going into next week. 
and i guess this is a kayfabe injury for the story cody Rhodes selling the ankle so we'll see what they say next week about cody's update on his ankle and that was this week's edition of monday night raw mid as usual of course the highlight of this episode was the title change austin theory becoming the brand new united states champion and of course we finally got that heel turn from Rhea. so let's see what they do with her the next few weeks let's see if they end up really putting her with edge and damian priest and if they really give this stable an official name we have yet to get an official name for this stable so let's see what they give us but thank you for checking out the channel once again and if you haven't already please make sure that you like comment share subscribe turn them notifications on and engage people until next time peace